Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to walk through how to properly change the spring in a Double Bell VSR-10. Now I know Double Bell is not the name that comes to mind when you hear VSR-10, but the model that I'm working on is certainly near the top of the list when it comes to the top performing VSR-10s. This is the SFC completely TNT upgraded real wood VSR sniper rifle. The full review and gameplay will be available on my channel within about a week or so and you'll be able to find links to those videos in the description below. To get started with the spring change, I remove all the accessories from the rifle, including the scope. To separate the upper receiver from the stock, remove these two screws here. They are different sizes, so just be sure to keep your screws organized. The stock can now be pulled free and placed aside. To remove the upper rail segment, simply remove the four screws along the top side. Now to remove the barrel assembly from the bolt, loosen this screw here. Keep in mind it only needs to be loosened. You do not need to completely remove this screw as the barrel will come out easily once the tension has been released. Pulling the bolt out of the barrel, I place the barrel assembly aside as we no longer need it. To remove the trigger guard, simply unscrewing this Phillips head here and the entire assembly will come loose. Now to remove the bolt, we must remove this retaining pin here, simply pulling it down and away from the assembly and it will come right out. Place it aside and now the bolt will come completely free. To access the current spring, I gently loosen the cylinder head with a pair of curved needle nose pliers. These are a must if you want to remove the head with no damage to the cylinder. Once it has been loosened enough, I finish the job with a plastic bag, just being careful around all air seal areas. I place all of the internals on a fresh white piece of paper so that they don't scratch or collect dust or pet hair as I do have a cat. our spring assembly will come free. It may need to push through the window to get it all out as mine did. And from here, replacing the spring is as simple as taking the old one out and sliding the new one in. My current spring was shooting about 450 FPS with the .20 gram BB and I'm upgrading it to a 500 FPS spring for upcoming milsim events. I do some minor cleanup and I try to transfer any extra lubrication from the old spring onto the new one. With the new spring ready, I pull the guide rod out to make sure the spring is fully around the guide rod and then I stuff all the internals back into the bolt assembly. Twisting the cylinder head back on, just like we did before, we'll seal it all up. And of course, I finish the job with the curved needle nose pliers to ensure it is extremely tight.
When inserting the bolt back into the receiver, you will need to push down this metal piece here from the front to allow the bolt to travel all the way forward. Also, this front ring may come forward with it. By pushing it right back down into the cylinder, it will fall back into place. Reinsert the retaining piece, it'll snap back into its place. And I quickly tested the air seal by pulling the trigger with my finger covering the barrel. And of course, when I removed my finger from the barrel, it popped, showing signs of a great seal. The entire trigger guard can now be reapplied with that single Phillips head screw. And now the bolt assembly can be reconnected to the barrel assembly. Line the barrel up into the bolt assembly the best that you can, using the holes along the bottom side as a center line. They should all run down the exact same center line. Once it's aligned, tighten it back into place with the hex screw located here. If these pieces are not properly aligned, your upper receiver is not going to fit back into the stock. So if your rifle does come back together perfectly, these parts are most likely lined up correctly. From here, I reattach the top side rail using the four screws from before. And now the upper receiver can go back into the stock. Make sure these two screws are hand tight and be sure not to over tighten and strip any of the hardware. And that's it, an FPS spring change performed on the Double Bell VSR-10. If you want to see this amazing rifle in action, the gameplay video will be live in about two weeks and that link will be posted in the description below. Thanks for checking out the video guys and I will see you in the next one.